Okay, now I'm going to see if I can fit this into uh, the story that I'm working on at the moment about the drop tanks. These are the ex-American Air Force fuel tanks that I was selling in the late 1960s. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, I've been selling them for a few months and um, I, I came across them. Well, not quite by accident. Someone told me were there. They were there, and I went to this farm near the old windmill in East Kirkby, and spoke to this old chap in the farmhouse, and said I'd heard that there's some tanks in the back, you know, in the trees and everything, and uh, can I buy some? So I, I, I paid this chap, you know, uh, not a lot, and I went from time to time for a few weeks and picked up these tanks and uh, they're awfully difficult to get out of the the trees and uh, overgrown elderberry bushes and they were about three or four high stacked up two foot um, deep six foot round and they're wooden crates and of course they've been there since the early 1950s this was what 15 16 years later and the, the wooden crates had more or less disintegrated so it's quite a dangerous job there were the crates needed smashing up so they could get at the tanks and get them out and then get them home and clean them up covered in green algae they're incredibly strong and very very well made beautiful once you got them cleaned up they were smooth as silk fiberglass anyway i've been doing this for a few weeks and we're, we're, this is living at 45 woodside on uh, just on the road out to Curtin from boston london road and one night there was a knock on the door and there was a <laughs> there was three people there was a there was a, a a chap in plain clothes who ended up being a police detective i think there was a policeman with him and there was this chap in mufti you know smartly dressed chap so could we come in so yeah sure uh, I think Ruth was probably busy with Helen or something. It was early evening. And we went and sat in the kitchen. Not a very big kitchen. And this chap said, uh, you know, asked me about these fuel tanks. I said, yeah, yeah, I've been selling these fuel tanks. Um, and where was I getting them from? And tell him where I was getting them from. And I was through this farmer chap near the windmill. Um, and so he said, well, look, Let's come to the point. This is Mr. Marshall from Australia. And the tanks are his. And you've been selling them and paying somebody else for them. And, you know, it's really, you know, he wants to sort things out. He'd actually seen my adverts um, in the Exchange and Mart. And it had been drawn to his attention because he was the owner, the sole owner of all these ex-American Air Force fuel tanks all over the world. There were several dumps of them. Um, different parts of the world where the Americans had had bases and as far as I knew they came from Super Sabre jets as far as I can gather but I've never actually seen an accurate picture of one on the, all the airplanes I've tried to find on the internet. Anyway, they were incredibly strong and very useful <laughs> but they were just dumped there and, and the trees had grown around them. So they said, well look, you know, the, the, Mr Marshall uh, he's a bit concerned because you've been selling these tanks and uh, he isn't, you know, he's the owner and he's not being getting paid. So I, I was very apologetic. I was taken completely by surprise, absolutely gobsmacked. And I said, well, I, you know, I thought they belonged to this chap on the farm. No, we've been to see Mr. I can't remember his name now, conveniently. And uh, we've had a very long talk to him and we know all about that. So... Uh, well, then I said, well, where do we go from here? Well, we said, Mr. Marshall is quite prepared to uh, um, overlook any previous problems with regard to the tanks you've already sold, providing you pay him for the tanks that are left there. So I said, yeah, well, I'm only too pleased to do that. So um, the long and the short of it is that we came to a deal. Archie Marshall and I came to a an agreement where I paid him for the remainder of the tanks. I mean, I don't know how many there were. I don't think he did either, really. We just did roughly. So I said, OK, roughly, um, I mean, I'll even pay you for 
the number I've not sold a lot I think I probably sold about 20 or 30 before that so it wasn't an awful lot of money involved it was just that he was concerned he'd come from Australia to sort it out he lived in Perth Archie Marshall PTY and he was a dealer in ex-military goods you know all kinds of things you know things that uh, that's not needed anymore in the military not just airplane stuff but mili you know army stuff and, and naval stuff and he, anything that was up for auction then he was in the market for buying it and reselling it so i i paid archie marshall for the rest of these tanks and we, we worked out i think there's probably about 300 or something like that and he asked me if I wanted to buy the rest, you know, in different parts of the world. There were probably two or three thousand in different parts of the world. But I just, I don't know, it was only me and Ruth and uh, I was working for Firestone still. I wasn't in a position to really think about that. Although, as I mentioned later in this story, I do sincerely wish that I had um, got, more involved with Archie Marshall because that was the most profitable venture I ever did in the whole of my life. Buying and selling stuff like that. I should have really thought more about it at the time. I did look into it a bit later and uh, and looked in the kind of stuff he was buying and uh, I mean a lot of money involved though. Um, I mean at that time after the war this is late 60s uh, the war had been over for 12 years or so 12 14 years there was still a lot of military stuff about all over the world um, up for sale up for grabs for not a lot of money you know and incredible stuff you know generators tanks <laughs> incredible stuff anyway let's continue with this little story about these tanks so um, yes I was visited late one evening by the local gendarmerie police in Boston and taken to task for selling these tanks that belong to this chap from Australia so wow on we go with the story right now that bit of the story I recorded this morning while it was foggy outside I've just it's after lunch I've just been out and chopped a load of firewood <laughs> So, uh, looking at, just going through that story again, I think we'll leave it there because that's long enough for one bit and we'll continue with the tank story in another episode. So, if you like what we're doing, then please think about giving us a like and subscribe to the channel. Have a look at uh, all the stuff on our website. You can download books and stories, audio stories and all kinds of things free of charge. Literally hundreds of stuff hundreds of things there is there to look at so have a look and uh, thanks for being with us and until the next time in another episode cheerio